thank you for joining us. That must have been extremely upsetting. You've got a medical background, so you would have understood what was happening, but you would have been in a minority. Yeah, definitely. I think um, I was still in shock, like most of the nation. Uh, my teammates, everyone was shocked. We were watching the game on a big screen, and the Spanish broadcaster didn't cut it off, so we were seeing all the live images, and uh, a lot of girls um, yeah, were crying, especially one of my teammates who is close friends with Christian Eriksen, grew up together. Um, she was yeah, losing it, and then... And, and, needed counselling um, as the entire football nation. Um, we were in shock. The fact that he's going to be fitted with an ICD, I think I'm right in saying that's what Daily Blind has. So if that's the case, then we can't say now that he definitely won't play football again. He might do Christian Eriksen. We just don't know. Is that fair to say? Uh, yeah, you could say that. It's hard to tell because usually you'll take it case by case, uh, depending what the underlying disease might be. Uh, Daily Blind, uh, we knew, has heart condition, but he didn't really have suffered a cardiac arrest the same way as Christian Eriksen did. Um, so it's hard to tell right now. You have to give the time and see how, it, how it's going to yeah, progress. Graham, you're an ambassador of British Heart Foundation. Mm. You've had your own heart issues, and I know you will <clears> always <throat> have been in awe of the medics and medicine and what it can do, and we saw it again on Saturday. Yeah, it was incredible. You know, you have to, as I said, you said I'm... An ambassador for the British Heart Foundation, you know, the research that they do, you know, with scientists and, and surgeons and they, they keep improving the, the techniques. Um, they do an incredible job and, and, you know, heart disease is still the biggest killer in our country. And, you know, it impacted me. You know, I, I it was 29 years ago, but I'm, you know, I'm sitting here still being able to tell a story and please God, it's the same for Christian Eriksen. I, looking at what happened to him, I think it'd be difficult for him to play again. You know, I think Dilly Blint had a, as you pointed out, you know, a very different story to his. I mean, he just keeled over. He, that would have been a, a massive attack to, to um, have that happen to you. And um, it'd be very difficult, I'd imagine, for, for him to come back to play serious professional football. But we, we hope he does, but I think it'd be very difficult for him. Uh, it's amazing, Nadia, what happened in that there was a German doctor in the crowd who had been training the medics at the Park and Stadium that day for such an eventuality. Yeah. And we had a similar situation in this country with Fabrice Mwamba, where a cardiologist came down from the stand at Tottenham. Yeah. That's what happened in the park and at the weekend that this gentleman went onto the pitch, this German doctor, to help out. Yeah, it's incredible, you know. I know the incident uh, was... It's unlucky, but if you flip it around and think about that, it couldn't have happened in a better uh, space, you know. He is at the field, although with a lot of cameras, the medical staff is around him, the ball is in that corner. So, you know, the fast reaction of the paramedics and also his teammate, Simon Kerr, who made sure that he didn't swallow his thong, made that he was, you know, back very, very quick. Um, so, unlucky, but also very, very lucky that happened at that point and not when he was alone at his that, room. That could happen to him putting the bins out. It could happen to him you know, cutting his grass in the garden. It happens yeah. while he's asleep. That, yeah, exactly. That's, you know, it wouldn't have to be exertion mm. for him to have that attack. So he has been lucky, unlucky, but lucky. Mm. What about the Danish players today? Uh, I, I think it's almost impossible for you to answer, but just how hard it will be for them to go about today's match. It, it must be hard. I think, you know, as we've just mentioned, the, the reaction from some of the players, uh, Simon Kerr, uh, Delaney and, and, and people like Schmeichel to show that composure. You know, I was watching it on my TV uh, and, I, and I, I panicked. You know, I was looking around, what could I do? Obviously, I can't do nothing. But again, credit goes to the emergency services and, you know, the players showed great composure and unbelievable awareness to, you know, get the flags and protect their teammate, which, which I loved. So, you know, hopefully today we'll see that togetherness, uh, a willingness to win not just for, of course, the country, but also for, for Ericsson. I think it's such a unique situation to find themselves in. None of us have all played the game for a long, long time. Nobody can predict what, what they'll be like today. I mean, it's such a unique situation these players find themselves in. And with Simon Kier, you think that very much represented Danish values, the way that he reacted throughout the whole of that incident? Definitely, you know, for him it was important to protect his friend, you know, help him, you know, protect his dignity at that point. I think that showed great Danish, <laughs> the Danish values. 
and uh, made me really proud, you know, to be a part of the country and, and play for the same team. As you say, protect his dignity. I think that yeah. sums it all up. That's really what he yeah. did.